It comes from Mark 12, 38 to 44. As Jesus taught, he said, Watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues mm. and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses, and for a show they make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money in the treasure, temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she gave out of her poverty, put in everything, all that she had to live on. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. I want to start this morning by telling you a little story about Sunday school. The junior Sunday school teacher asked her eight eager children in the class if they would be willing to give $100,000 to missionary. And they screamed, yes, we will. And then she asked, would you give $1,000 to missionary work? Again, of course, they shouted, yes, we will. <clears throat> she then asked them, how about if you would give $100 to missionaries? Yes, we agree. Then she said, would you? you give just a dollar to missionaries? The children exclaimed, yes, with the exception of one boy. And the teacher noticed this boy, and she asked him, Johnny? <laughs> it's always Johnny, yeah. <laughs> Why didn't you say yes this time? Well, he stammered around and he said, because I have a dollar in my pocket. <laughs> Isn't that the way it goes? That's about how it is. Because we like to hold on to that dollar. <laughs> it's all great if we can give all that. But really, little is much when God is in it. If home is where the heart is, and we treasure that, then we can come to understand that God is an all-sufficient, ever-present God. We learn by giving. We learn by giving all that we can that there is in that we will always have enough. This is a life lesson that many times people don't grasp totally or fully. Now, I know for a fact that little is much when God is in it. Little is much when God is in it. We have illustration after illustration after illustration in scripture and truly even in our own lives. But if we were to look at scripture, which is what I've done, I want to show us that little is much truly when God is in it. First example that I saw was a woman in 2 Kings chapter 4 verses 1 to 7. If you are taking notes, you want to read that story that Elijah told this woman to go and to borrow, not one jar, but as many jars as she could borrow. Because he, he, was, he told her to go and, and borrow them, and then she was to fill them up with oil for her and her son and Elijah. And that's what she did. And you know what happened? She never ran out. She never ran out. But you know what she did? 
is she went and she borrowed. She didn't say, well, you know, there's no oil here. There's no nothing. No, she took action. She did something other than just stand around and complain about what she didn't have. She went and she took action. We also see David, the shepherd. We see this, this mammoth Goliath coming against David, and yet David had a stone and a sling. And he took action, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he took action. Little as much when God is in it. We see, if you, if you read Judges chapter 7, verses 1 to 7, we see Gideon, who defeats the Mennonites and, uh, with only 300 men. But you know what happened? Is that he had 10,000. But God told him, you know, this is too many. I'm thinking, wow. You know, and God told him to do certain things. And so he did those certain things to get, to get down to 300 and you know what happened? God delivered the children of Israel because Gideon took action. We see Moses. Now Moses was a man who stuttered and a man who, um, you know, was put out as a child and all of these things. But, but then God gave Moses this thing called the staff. <laughs> that parted the seas <laughs> and carried and Moses used this staff as a tool but the staff wasn't the power you see God was the power All right. yeah. mm -hmm. Amen. but God uses those things in our lives in the gospel we read about the thousands of people who were fed with two fish and five loaves of bread. And you know what happened? They had an abundance. They had leftovers <laughs> from the two fish and the five loaves of bread. There was an abundance because they broke bread together. And then we have this widow who gave the largest offering, even though it was by some standards, small, because she gave all she had instead of out of her abundance. I look at my own life. I look at my own life as an example. Growing up, we didn't have a lot. Matter of fact, by standards of the world, we were very poor. We were poor. But you know what? We were rich beyond measure because we understood that in God there is abundance. It took me a lot of my adult life to understand the principle of giving, of giving at least 10%, no matter what. I used to work with Reverend Ed at the Samaritan Center. And Reverend Ed was instrumental in changing how I saw this giving thing. Because you know what? He not only talked constantly about giving, but he illustrated giving with his life. God was, you know, he used to say, God's not interested in how much or the amount you give, but that you give faithfully. God's not interested in the amount that you give but that you give faithfully. <laughs> I learned that giving to God first blessed my life. It blessed my life more than I could even imagine. I learned that the hard way because I used to not give and I cheated God. <laughs> Were there lean times? Yes. Were there times of struggle? Yes. Were there times when I felt like giving up? Yes. But I learned that if I put God first, my little is much because God is in it. I know God. And the God I know is the God of abundance, not the God of lack. 
I know God. And the God I know is a God who cares for us, who loves us, who will always be there for us. I know that if we do what we can do, even if we think it's small, it will be enough. It will be enough for God. It will be a great thing for God. Too many times we, there are some people that see the opposite because there are people living out of this lack of mentality. Maybe that's some of you here this morning. People operate instead of fear, instead of applying the power of the Spirit of God. You see, God is not a God of lack. Mm -hmm. So if you're operating in the, in the spirit of lack, guess what? God is not in that lack. Because God is a God of abundance. As I was thinking about this, because I know that this is not a popular theme when we talk about giving. But you know, it's, it's important. It's an important thing that we do what we can with the resources that we have. That each one of us take responsibility to do what we can. You see, I was reminded this week of the, one of the scriptures that was used at my ordination, Joshua 1. It's an incredible scripture in Joshua 1. If you've never read the chapter 1 of Joshua, I encourage you to read the whole thing because it's an amazing thing. But, but Joshua 1, 8, 9 says, Keep the book of the law upon your lips always. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything that's written in it. Then, guess what? Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you to be strong, to be courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the sovereign God will be with you wherever you go. So this tells me that I have the ability to be courageous, even if I don't feel like it. <laughs> this tells me that I have the ability to be strong, mm -hmm. even if I don't feel like it. This tells me that I don't have to get discouraged. You know why? Because God is going to be with you every step of the way. God is going to be with you every step of the way. Coming home in our hearts to treasure the blessing of giving is an awesome thing. It's an awesome thing. I want to remind you, listen, I want you to remind you not to compare what you give to somebody else. This is really important. <clears throat> Not to compare what you give to somebody else. I want to invite you and encourage you to stand up and be the giver God has called you to be. Not somebody else. What has God called you to give? What has called you? What has God called you to do? <clears throat> and stop comparing the numbers Amen. if you do that. I believe that if we do what God has called us to do, individually and collectively, then God can and will provide and deliver us from this struggle. But it's not just about saying it, you know? It's not just about saying, oh, well, I'm going to give. It's about putting our faith into action. Hebrews 11, 6 says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to God must believe that God exists and that God rewards those who earnestly seek God. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, in the back of our minds, we think, is God real? Will God really provide for me? Will God really be there for me? Does God really exist? 
And you know what? That's something that many people before you have asked. And I'm sure many people after you will ask. And the great thing about that is I challenge you to prove that God does not exist. <laughs> Just try to prove it. Try to prove it, that God does not exist. You know what happens when people try to prove that God does not exist? They become believers. They become believers. <laughs> and so whatever works for you, because some of us need to be challenged. Yeah? So I invite you to find out for yourselves. I invite you to find out through prayer, through study, through looking, through trying to prove that God does not exist. It's an amazing thing. I want to close this morning with a, just a little illustration. First thing. Everybody knows what this is. Flash drive. Mm -hmm. This is a flash drive. For my computer. <laughs> For your computer. <laughs> it's little. But when you plug it in, guess what? Yeah. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of information on here. I know because I put it on there. <laughs> Remember, Jesus saves. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> it's little. Little as much when God is in it. All right. That's good. Preach it, this man. little stamp. This is a forever stamp. <laughs> I could keep it forever, and if I had it in my pocket, I could mail a letter from here to New York City. New York City? New York City? <laughs> Thank you, George. <laughs> I could mail a letter anywhere in the United States of America with this little thing. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Little is much when God is in it. Maybe you could send a letter that says, thinking of you. Want to send you some blessings today. Yeah. To Main Street, wherever. Like this little safety pin. Boy, I don't know about you, but man, it saved me a few times. <laughs> I popped a button, and guess what? I had to use a safety pin to put my button back in place. Or popped a button. <laughs> I don't have that problem. <laughs> yeah, some of you got it. <laughs> a safety pen has many uses. much and God is in it. How about this rubber band? I used, this, I used a rubber band like this just this week to tie on my hose to my pump in the pool that I pump off the water. You know, it's a little thing. But man, you know, you can hold all kinds. You can hold your ponytail up. You can put papers and you can hold papers. Amazing use in rubber bands. <laughs> little but little is much when God is in it <laughs> a paper clip you know whoever invented this must have been a woman <laughs> because we know how important it is to keep things tidy I was going to bring a staple or two, but you know. <laughs> now it's just not, it, it's together. A paper clip. A lot of uses. You know, they have this thing, 101 uses for paper clips. Pick a lock, yeah. You know, I used it one day to reset something because I had it. You know? Reset your remote. Yeah, reset your remote. <coughs> Little is much when God is in it. All of these things are small but have the potential to be used for something great. 
for something more. You may think your giving is small, but God can use each of us if we just do what we can. Even though right now we're small, we're re-envisioning, we are discerning where we want to go. Sometimes we get tempted to think that we're not important, but we are. We are very important. All of us have so much to give. All of you are important in the process. We have much to give. Sometimes I think we sell ourselves a little short. We have much to give. God is not concerned with the quantity of our gifts and our offerings, just that we do. God is not intimidated by my lack of resources or the lack of resources that we think that we don't have or the seemingly impossible situations that you might be facing. God wants us as people of God to trust in God and to accomplish great things for God. And we have, all we have to do is apply our faith, put the stamp on the letter, put in the flash drive, do what you can do to make a difference. All you have to do is do what you can do. And you will make a difference because you make a difference. Little is much when God is in it and we serve an abundant God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.